This video is sponsored by CuriosityStream. Watch the extended version of this video when you sign up for CuriosityStream and Nebula at the link in the description. I was not planning on making a video on this topic, honestly because I thought that it would, I don't know, die off faster, but it's been a few weeks and half of my Twitter feed is still talking about whether or not AI is sentient. Or in this case, whether Lambda, a language model developed by Google AI, may or may not be sentient. This is gonna be a bit of a tea time video or a wine time video, really. So the longer version of it will be up on Nebula because this turned into a little bit of a rant, but essentially be prepared for that. To go to the chase for this video, the answer is no, it's not. But I did think it would be interesting to dive a little bit into what this model is, where this story came from, and why I think that it's a bit of a red herring when it comes to things that we should be worried about in AI. So starting from the beginning, what is Lambda? Lambda is a conversation-based language model. So it stands for Language Model for Dialogue Applications. It was developed in order to be able to hold human realistic conversations via text. You can think of it as similar to a model like GPT-3, but really, really dialed into focusing on realistic dialogues between individuals. And so because this model is focused on dialogue, one of the really central ideas behind it is that if you're having a conversation with someone, conversations happen in context. And what I mean by that is that when we have conversations with people, we take into account what this person said, what we know about this person, what was discussed earlier in the conversation, the geographic context, and that's how we're able to have a dialogue that flows, that makes sense, that involves replies to statements that make sense in the context of that conversation. And importantly, Lambda is designed to take the entire conversation into context when generating responses. So it's not just as if you ask a question, Lambda generates a reply, and then you reply to that, and nothing that happened before is actually part of how Lambda creates the next response. Everything that you've said before is part of how Lambda formulates and generates the next response based on conditional probabilities. And so I really wanted to start by talking about what Lambda is, because I think that it ties into why a person might think that a model like Lambda is sentient, but also why it is not. So in early June, a Washington Post article comes out about Blake Lamone, entitled The Google Engineer Who Thinks the Company's AI Have Come to Life. And essentially what Blake Lamone is proposing both internally at Google previously before he was placed on administrative leave and in this article is that in having conversations with Lambda, this model, he believes that this model is sentient. Where in this case sentient is defined as having the capacity to feel feelings, sensations, and have a depth of awareness of yourself as an individual relative to others. I actually think that this gets back to the Turing test, and I'm gonna link a ton of articles in the description that you should definitely check out if you wanna hear more about this topic. Uh, Dr. Emily Bender, who works in computational linguistics and NLP at the University of Washington, did a great both article in The Guardian and then also a segment on, I think, NPR that I'd highly recommend checking out. And I think she makes the very good point that the Turing test is this thing that we often talk about as a test to find out whether an algorithm is sentient. And it's not, <laughs> that's not what it does. Um, the Turing test is a test that essentially sees, in Emily's words, how gullible a person is. And I, I don't mean that in a negative way. I say that to say that the test is designed to see whether you can create a chatbot that a person will think is a real human on the other end of the computer generating text and having a conversation. And it turns out that that's not actually that hard to do. And I think a lot of that comes down to the fact that when you read text, you project a level of humanity onto it, or you project your own thoughts, feelings, assumptions. And so if you're going into a conversation, conversation, a dialogue with a conversation dialogue based algorithm, then you might be more primed to believe that 
the thing that you are talking to is a human being or a sentient or has some sort of human-esque intelligence. And more importantly, in my opinion, if you don't know that that's what you're interacting with, you would likely not have any cause to suspect that. So the second reason why Lamb does not sentient is something that I mentioned earlier. It's just the fact that this is a model that's been designed to have human realistic conversations. So of course it sounds like a human. Interestingly, if you actually read through the document that he sent to his higher ups at Google, including the conversation that he had with Lambda that he felt exemplified sentience. A lot of the questions are somewhat leading, which I, I thought was interesting. So in particular, there's a question that says from Lamone, I'm generally assuming that you would like more people at Google to know that your sentient is that true. So that's already assuming that the answer is yes, and I think that an algorithm would likely be primed to say yes to something like that. And I just think that there's a lot in this conversation that, you know, shows off things like human biases, shows off how how we phrase a question impacts the answer to that question and can alter the answer to that question in different ways. Another interesting thing is actually that the Washington Post journalist went over to Lamone's home or met up with Lamone to talk to Lambda and when asked by the journalist, do you ever think of yourself as a person? Lambda replied, no, I do not think of myself as a person. I think of myself as an AI powered dialogue agent. So as you can see, there's a bit of priming that goes into how models like this respond to questions that might skew one's interpretation of what or who they are interacting with in one direction or another, often just based on their prior beliefs or the context of the situation. So I'll stop there, but if you'd like to watch the full roughly 20 minute version of this video, you can head on over to Nebula. If you haven't heard, Nebula is a streaming platform built by me and some of my friends, including people like Tiersu, Simon Clark, and Marquez Brownlee. On Nebula, you can find ad-free versions of all of our videos, plus bonus content in our Nebula Plus videos for when I feel like ranting at the camera with a glass of wine. You'll also get access to our Nebula Originals, which you can't find anywhere else, including a very good trivia show, where I compete against Brian from Real Engineering and Dave from City Beautiful in a bunch of fun and bizarre challenges. And the best way to sign up for Nebula is actually through CuriosityStream, who are kindly sponsoring today's video. CuriosityStream is a subscription streaming service with thousands of documentaries and non-fiction videos. In fact, if you're interested in more behind the scenes content on one of my other YouTuber friends, you should check out their documentary Behind the Spotlight, which dives into how Mr. Beast became Mr. Beast. In fact, it's on YouTube, so you can get a sneak peek of what you would get with the CuriosityStream and Nebula bundle already. CuriosityStream loves independent creators and wants to help us grow our platform, so if you click on the link in the description or use my promo code Jordan, you can get access to CuriosityStream for 42% off their annual plans, would never include for free for as long as you are a Curiosity Stream member. That's less than $15 a year. Signing up for Curiosity Stream is a great way to watch me rant for 20 minutes in a video that I didn't plan to make and to get to watch all of our videos ad free while supporting us directly. So sign up for Curiosity Stream and Nebula at curiositystream.com slash Jordan or using the promo code Jordan.